Hey everybody, I'm Pete. I work on Dagster and today I am going to talk about revisiting a blog post that we did um, a while ago called The Poor Man's Data Lake. Uh, the URL for this blog post when we finally post it is going to be here and the URL to the code is uh, is right here. It's all hosted on GitHub. So um, if you recall, you know, in October of last year, uh, Sandy and I posted a blog post where we built a data lake from scratch with DuckDB and Parquet files and S3. And now that Mother Duck is kind of emerging from stealth, uh, this is a startup built on top of DuckDB, uh, we wanted to revisit this post and talk about how you can kind of, you know, take Mother Duck, integrate it with this approach and get, you know, something very similar to a, to a modern cloud data warehouse. Um, so I'm just going to take you through this blog post step by step. Uh, this one's a little less complicated than the previous one, um, but it's still pretty interesting. So uh, just to catch you up uh, on this old blog post, you know, the, the idea here is that, um, you know, using something like DuckDB, if you don't have massive data sets that require like lots of parallel computation, you can actually dramatically simplify your architecture by adopting DuckDB, uh, Parquet, and S3 and just kind of creating a very simple data lake like that and orchestrating it with Dagster. You can get a lot of the benefits of a modern, uh, you know, data platform with just those tools. Uh, when you combine it with Mother Duck, you can um, get uh, even more benefits. So, um, you can basically take these uh, Parquet files and, um, uh, and replace them with tables in Mother Duck. And you can, you know, visualize them, share them, make, it makes collaboration a lot easier. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So first of all, like, what is Mother Duck? Um, it, I think it's easiest to explain what Mother Duck is by comparing it with, with vanilla DuckDB. So if you were to install DuckDB on your computer um, from Package Manager, go to DuckDB.org to install it. Um, you would get this command line tool where we can like create tables, you know, and, and read from them and, and we can see the data that comes out. Now the problem with using DuckDB in this way where we just run DuckDB is that by default, it creates an in-memory ephemeral database. So what that means is like if you were to restart DuckDB and try to select from the same table, you get this error message that says the table with name foo does not exist. Um, so you need to process your data somewhere. Like a database that can't store data is not that useful. And so out of the box, DuckDB lets you persist data to a local file. So I'm running the, the CLI here and I pass in this file name that points to like a local file on disk. And again, I run the same commands that I did last time. I create this table foo. I select from that table and then I see the results. And then if I quit and I reopen it again and point it to the same mydatabase.duckdb file, the data persists. Now this is really useful in like a local development environment um, or an otherwise a single player environment. But when you start to kind of collaborate across different teams, um, you really want to be able to share these tables in a pretty you know transparent and easy to use way. And so in the previous blog post, we used Parquet files sitting on S3. Um, and in this one, we're going to use Mother Duck. Uh, Mother Duck brings a lot of the advantages um, that of a modern cloud data warehouse to this problem. So with Parquet files sitting in S3, you don't have like a beautiful UI to go visualize all your tables. Um, you know, access control is limited to what you can do in S3. Uh, and just overall, it's kind of a, a bit more of a homegrown DIY experience than using something like Mother Duck. Uh, using something like Mother Duck is you closer to like the experience of using something like Snowflake. And so what's what I didn't realize before working on this blog post is that actually the Mother Duck client is um, already bundled with DuckDB, so you don't have to install anything. Um, you simply give it this funny looking file name, and this is actually a, a, a URL. The MD is like the protocol. So instead of HTTP, for example, it's MD standing for Mother Duck. This is the name of your database, and then you pass in a token. So you have to go to motherduck.com, get your access token, and paste it in there, or otherwise provide it as an environment variable. And um, this will create a new database on startup. So if the Hello World database doesn't exist, they'll just create it for you. And then you run the exact same, you know, DuckDB commands that you would normally run, and it just operates on this remote, um, this remote database instance sitting inside of, of Mother Duck. And I can actually, like, as long as you pass the same database name and a token that has access to it to, like, um, you know, you can run that from a different machine and select the same data. Um, 
this uh, should not seem like super mind blowing uh, to you other than the fact that it like it's very simple and it just works. Like if you're already using DuckDB, it was like, it was very, very easy to transition this project from, from local DuckDB to Mother Duck. Um, so uh, let's actually uh, transition our project from uh, uh, local DuckDB to Mother Duck. So before we do this, I think it's worth like taking a read at the old blog post. Here's the URL right here. Um, this is where we kind of assemble the um, the the poor man's data lake from scratch using like Parquet files sitting in S3. We're going to basically take those Parquet files sitting on S3 and like throw out the S3 client, throw out the Parquet file, and instead replace it with tables sitting in Mother Duck. So the first thing we need to do is change our DuckDB connection. So in the old project, we had this class representing DuckDB and you passed in some options and it gave you the ability to query DuckDB. So you can see here, we call the DuckDB connect function. We pass it this magic string indicating that it should use an ephemeral in memory database. We load the HTTPFS extension so it can read and write Parquet files sitting in S3. And then we, we do a little bit of other stuff here that, um, you know, converts this, this SQL object to string and runs it as a query and then returns the results as a pandas data frame. So um, all we need to do here to update this is basically give it um, a second parameter called URL and then we'll connect to this URL uh, rather than the hard-coded string representing it in a memory database. Uh, we'll default it to in memory, but um, oh, there should actually be a colon there. I'll, I'll fix that before we post the, the blog post. But um, the point is uh, now we can pass in a uh, URL to Mother Duck. So if you recall, when we set this DB up in the old project, we pointed it at S3. So we passed in a bunch of these configuration options about S3, and then we instantiated DuckDB with these options. Now with this new unupdated version, we don't need any of those S3 related options, um, uh, even though we, we can still include them if we'd like, uh, but we pass in a URL and we'll pass in the, our mother duck URL as an environment variable. So we don't have to hard code that access token in um, to our project. Uh, hopefully this makes sense. So just to recap, I know I went through that really quickly, but just to recap, all we really did was we added this little URL parameter and we connected to that URL. It's like, um, I think this is technically a three line change, but it really feels like a one liner, very simple. Um, and then we pass in our, duck, our, our mother duck URL to our new client. Um, so we can actually go and run this project as is. And it will, um, it will work identical to how the local uh, DuckDB version worked. It'll still use S3 files and Parquet because we haven't gotten rid of those yet, but um, it will be running them on Mother Duck. So like that's not useful on its own, but it kind of just shows that Mother Duck is really compatible with, with how local DuckDB works. So um, the next step is to uh, actually go and get rid of the, the references to the S3 client and to get rid of those parquet files and replace them with tables in Mother Duck. And so Dagster makes this super, super easy. We can actually do this without touching any of our business logic, which is really, really important and really powerful uh, because Dagster has this abstraction called an IO manager. And the point of an IO manager is to take all of that code related to reading and writing data and, and dealing with storage and persistence and abstracting that way uh, away into like this one thing called an IO manager. So the rest of your code doesn't need to know about it. So as we go through this example, you're going to see that we never touch our business logic. Really, all we do is we change this. And so we started out, we had this thing called a duck pond IO manager, which um, was responsible for reading and writing to a local, um, uh, or, or sorry, to those S3 files in Parquet. And so what this, um, so the first step is to, to basically just copy and paste this into a new class called mother duck IO manager. And we're going to, iterate on this IO manager and get rid of all the references to Parquet and S3 and replace them with references to Mother Duck. So you can see what this class does right now. It takes in the DuckDB client, it takes in some stuff about S3, like the bucket name, the prefix. It knows how to construct S3 URLs uh, to Parquet files based on the name of the, the software-defined asset. 
um, and it uh, it knows how to uh, you know do the magic incantation to write the parquet file to S3, and it knows how to do the magic incantation to uh, read the parquet file from S3. Again, if this is totally alien to you, go back and check out this blog post, the original blog post, DuckDB Data Lake. There's actually a video version of it. You can go, you know, um, watch that whole thing, um, and then come back to this post. And it should make some more sense. So uh, we need to basically make a couple of changes. We need to change handle output to um, basically write that data to a mother duck table instead of an S3 uh, parquet file on S3. And then we need to make the corresponding change to load input to read from that file, or to, sorry, to read from that table. So um, let's see here. Uh, we're going to replace this function up here that computes S3 URLs. And we're actually just going to replace that with something that creates a mother duck table name. Because we're, again, we, we're um, you know, going to save this to a mother duck table. So this is pretty straightforward, right? We just have a prefix, and then we um, have an underscore, and then we, we construct the, uh, the asset name. It's pretty, you know, it's, it's going to create kind of like, you know, valid SQL identifiers that you know, look like table names. Uh, next, uh, we're going to um, actually use that function. And so uh, we're going to, rather than kind of use the, the, the DuckDB feature to write a parquet file, we're going to create or replace a table with, a, with this specific table name. And then we're going to use whatever passed in SQL statement to, to populate that table. Um, contrast that with kind of the version above. It's it's quite similar, but you know the copy this copy uh, statement will basically copy it into S3 as a parquet file. This create a replace table will just create it as a normal mother duck table. Um, and then if you notice, like our load input uh, function becomes extremely simple, right? It's just a select star from table name. Easy as that, be again, because this is just a normal, you know, native mother duck table, just like any other data warehouse. Um, and then, uh, finally, we construct our mother duck IO manager and we pass it into our Dagster project. Um, th this is how we, how we pass IO managers into our project. We've replaced the duck pond IO manager, which takes in, you know, all those S3 parameters with just a mother duck IO manager that takes in a duck DB client that is pointed at mother duck. And that is literally all you have to do. Um, I know that I talked through a lot of steps, but really it's, it's quite straightforward. We made the code simpler, not more complex. We got rid of the references to S3. We got rid of the references to Parquet. And the SQL that we're generating now is like pretty vanilla SQL, right? It's create or replace table. It's select star from table. Um, you know, it's pretty native to SQL. And then you get this like nice, nice looking uh, mother duck UI. Rather than just a list of files in S3, um, you actually have like a, you know, an interactive query explorer that can um, can visualize it. And you can see over here, um, we've populated our data warehouse in our Hello World database uh, with all the all the, the tables in our project, um, which is uh, which is pretty neat. Um, so anyway, uh, that's that's the post, you know, uh, nothing groundbreaking here, but the utility of this is, is pretty, pretty massive, right? Like we, we don't have to set up as much infrastructure, like we don't need to think about S3, we don't need to think about Parquet. We can just use vanilla SQL, and we get a lot of usability benefits from using Mother Duck as well. So anyway, thanks for, for taking a look at this. And um, as always, if you have any questions, um, just hop in the Daxter Slack uh, or go to daxter.io slash community and uh, join the community. Thank you.